Hello, I'm Dr. Angela Katwa, and welcome to my series, Where on Earth Do You Live?, where I reveal the hidden mysteries locked away in the rocks hidden under your feet. In this episode, we're exploring the hidden mysteries of the rocks locked underneath the town of Folkestone. So let's kick off with the top three facts about this town. Folkestone was the birthplace for Dr. William Harvey, who was born in the town in 1578. Dr. William Harvey was a celebrated physician of his time. He was one of the very first people to observe and describe the systematic circulation and the properties of blood as it was pumped through the body by the heart. Now moving on to architecture, did you know that Folkestone was home to one of the highest brick arched viaducts anywhere in the world? In 1843, the legendary civil engineer Sir William Cubitt was tasked by South Eastern Railway to construct a railway line so that passengers in Folkestone could take direct ferry services all the way over to France. The railway line also crossed the harbour and in order to achieve this, William Cubitt built a huge viaduct comprised of 13 arches, the highest which is about 100 feet tall. My final fact about Folkestone means we have to go back in time to 1914 during the onset of World War I. As the war ravaged across Europe, Folkestone became an important port for the war effort. It's estimated that approximately 10 million troops, including nurses, passed through Folkestone on their way to war. The steep downhill street where these troops marched through on their way to war is now known as the Road to Remembrance. So those were some fabulous facts all about Folkestone. But I'm going to take you on a journey back in time, 110 million years back to the Cretaceous period. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised to see what Folkestone used to be like. Wow, welcome to Folkestone as it was 110 million years ago during the early Cretaceous period. Isn't it wonderful here? It's like a Mediterranean paradise. And to get me in the mood, I've got a little cocktail. Take a quick sip to get me in the mood to talk about geology. This was a landscape characterised by golden sandy beaches and warm, shallow turquoise seas. Towards the end of the late Triassic, the supercontinent that we now know as Pangaea started to break up. This ended a long spell of terrestrial conditions for the landscape we now know as Great Britain. As this supercontinent started to break up, the seas invaded the land. Geologists call this a marine transgression, and what this means is that the water flooded across the land, causing global sea levels to rise. As the continents continued to shift, there was a period of uplift and erosion, and this continued to the start of the Cretaceous period. As this land became uplifted, sea levels actually started to fall, and the land where Folkestone is today became a broad, warm, shallow sea dotted with sandy islands. Now, if we look at the rock record at Folkestone, there's a particular rock called the Lower Greensand that gives us evidence that this is what the landscape was like. The Lower Greensand is a sedimentary rock and it's actually composed of sand particles that were eroded from the land and then transported to a beach. That beach was subject to constant shifting and changing due to strong tidal currents. And we can see evidence of this in the rock itself. Firstly, the structures in the rock tell us about all those strong tidal currents. And secondly, the fossils tell us much more about what those conditions were like. Two million years later, the situation in Folkestone started to change. Sea levels actually started to rise again. With deeper seas, only fine-grained sediments could be carried out further away from land. And these fine-grained sediments, known as silts, would have accumulated on the bottom of the seafloor and eventually would form the rock that we know as the gulp clay. These warm seas were home to a variety of marine life, some of which are extinct today. As time went on into the late Cretaceous period, sea levels continued to rise and the land was completely inundated by these warm seas that were absolutely teeming with life with marine plankton. Known as coccolithopores, they had these beautiful skeletons made of calcium carbonate. When these organisms died, their bodies sank to the bottom of the seabed and eventually formed a rock that we know today as the chalk. 
From my perspective as an earth scientist, the rocks beneath Folkestone are really special. They show us how natural systems are able to respond and adapt to changes in sea level and climate if they are given time. They teach us that in this current climate emergency, nature needs time to respond and adapt to the changes that we are forcing upon her. So who knew that under your feet if you lived in Folkestone, there was a story about how the planet was adapting to climate change and sea level rise. So now you know where on earth you live if you live in Folkestone.